was a lot of fun. That being episode number 179 of the Mile High Show, recorded by yours truly, Matt Santos, the host of the Mile High Show. My guest today was, uh, or is, Dale Lee Richards. He is a local-based local musician with roots all over the world, as you'll hear about in this episode. Uh, spent his youth here in Prescott. He talks a little bit about that. Bounced back to Florida. Uh, traveled overseas. Uh, played music all over the world. So sit back and enjoy my conversation with Dale Lee Richards. Recorded today on a rainy monsoon season Saturday afternoon at Billy Jack's Tavern. Billy Jack's is located at 2555 Highway 69 in beautiful Humboldt, Arizona. Humboldt is a small community south of Prescott and Prescott Valley, north of Phoenix, uh, right there on that Highway 69 corridor. If you're from the area, you definitely know what it is. And if you are not from this area, if not from Arizona, look it up. Humboldt is a beautiful little farming community uh, with at least one rockin' bar in it, and that's Billy Jack's Saloon. It was uh, it was neat being out on the patio or in the covered patio, enclosed patio at Billy Jack's with Budweiser, Bud Light buckets. You know, the ones that they normally serve at a table with like six or eight beer bottles in it, a bucket of ice. They were scattered around the floor because the uh, the roof leaked and it is uh, pouring rain uh, in Humboldt while we were recording. Uh, it's a beautiful time of year in Arizona. I love it this time of year. It's hot outside. It's humid. It's muggy, but the wind is blowing. The thunder and lightning are decorating the skies, and uh, and water is falling from the clouds. It's really neat this time of year. I, I absolutely love it, and I, I enjoyed sitting down and talking with Dale Lee Richards. I have been wanting to talk with him on mic for a while because he's just an interesting character. He is uh, it's hard to explain. Uh, I had never really sat and talked with him. It was my impression that we had never met before in person, only online through the magic of uh, Facebook and social media. But it turns out we have met. He has a much better memory than I do. He uh, came to my window when I was working for the motor vehicle office here, the MVD, DMV, whatever you want to call it, uh, at some point, he said he came to my window, and I, I, I felt bad. I do not remember the interaction, uh, and I should have because, like I said, he is a very, very interesting guy. Uh, I had kind of a preconceived idea, uh, picture of him in my mind just from his online presence, and it was a very friendly and happy preconceived idea and thankfully and glad to say I was not far off. He was a joy to talk with. He's got some great stories. Uh, He is deeply immersed in the pop culture, music, TV, cartoon world of the mid and late 60s. It shows through his musical influences. It shows through his fashion sense. And it shows through his lifestyle. Uh, One of the things I really wanted to talk to him about, and we did mention it, we did talk a little bit about it, is his ongoing project of building a real live life-size robot. Stick around. You'll, You'll hear what we're talking about. Follow Dale Lee Richards on Facebook under Dale Lee Richards. Also, follow his uh, his multiple uh, projects, including what he was doing at Billy Jack's Saloon today. He was playing with his band or the band that he is associated with, Truly Reckless. They are available at Truly Reckless Band on Facebook. Uh, him and his wife, Dale and his wife, are also involved in a project this is uh, you can find them on reverb nation slash crab bubbles yes crab bubbles like the little uh crustacean and uh, the things that uh that come out of your nose when you're drinking and laughing too much crab bubbles crab bubbles band on facebook this is how they're described 
And this actually is a very good description of Dale Lee Richards himself. Facebook profile of Crab Bubbles Band. Power Pop, Punk, Garage, Surf. And that is a very good description of Dale himself. So I enjoyed my conversation with Dale out on the uh, enclosed patio at Billy Jack's dodging the uh, the rain bubbles, or the rain bubbles, the raindrops falling through the leaky roof. It was a lot of fun, though. I enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you do as well. Uh, like I'd mentioned, this was a an impromptu recording session. Uh, Dale had posted on his Facebook page that his band Truly Reckless would be playing out there, and I saw it this morning. Uh, early about 8 o'clock this morning and instantly shot uh, Dale a message. Hey, if you can, carve out a few minutes and we'll sit down and record. Because like I said, we traded some messages recently about wanting to record a podcast. And uh, I jumped at the opportunity to do so today. Again, one, because I really wanted to sit and talk with Dale. But two, uh, I had a, a recording session scheduled last night and through some some various circumstances, it didn't come to fruition. So, um I was glad Dale could fill in last minute. Uh, It's a little shorter than usual, but uh, again, I hope you enjoy it. But when I was attempting to record last night, it landed me at a new venue in Prescott that I encourage you to check out. It is a new venue, new management, but a tried and true building. Those of you in the Prescott area will know it as many different names, most famously, I think, Coyote Joe's, Kojo's, a music and drinking and food venue that has been around for a long time on Prescott's Whiskey Row. Uh, It was a combo of, in my time here in Yavapai County, when I got here, it was Coyote Joe's downstairs, Annie's Attic upstairs, a kind of one venue, two, two different feels. And Coyote Joe's had, of course, the restaurant and bar downstairs and the the magnificent patio that features some of the best musicians from and traveling through Prescott, Arizona. And then Annie's Attic, which was kind of a a funkier, uh, I don't know, it just had a real neat vibe upstairs. It was really cool. Same building, different uh, different feel. That's what it was when I moved here in the early 2000s. It had then changed, uh, closed down and, and opened up as Brick and Bones, Moonshine Bar and Grill, and uh, we recorded a lot there. Then that closed, and it opened up as Far From Folsom, and then several months ago that closed, and it opened up as Rickety Cricket's Brewing Company, and they are based out of Kingman. They have a long-standing rickety crickets in Kingman on Route 66 or Beale Street, I forget, somewhere there in Kingman on the historic portion of town, and they have just recently opened up again at the old Far From Folsom, what did we call it? Annie's, Annie Joe's uh, Bones Folsom, I, I forget what we called it. We incorporated all of them. Anyway, it's it's got a, uh, a a long history on Whiskey Row, and uh, we stopped in there last night, uh, attempting to record it. Didn't work out though. Something uh, something came up, but while I was there, got a chance to sample the food and a couple of beverages. Uh, very nice stuff coming out of the Rickety Crickets kitchen, and uh, I hope to be sitting down soon with Joab Swan, the general manager. Uh, at Rickety Crickets, and I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe he was also uh, formerly associated with Far From Folsom. I, we'll, we'll clarify that when I sit down with Joab, talk about some of the music coming through there. What They got some comedy shows scheduled, and of course, the kitchen and uh, and bar. So we'll get some more information from the Rickety Crickets folks soon. When I got there, friends of the show and friends of mine, the Front Page Blues Band, were taking the stage. And a uh, good friend of mine and friend of the show, host of The Real Film Nerds, Mr. Matt Hinshaw, he stopped in. We had, we had some dinner together chatting about the, the community and, and podcasting and everything else. Uh, check out realfilmnerds.com and uh, follow him if you are a movie buff or just want to hear some good stories and reviews about what's in, in the cinemas today. Uh, him and uh, and uh, the Mystery Mike from Parts Unknown do a combo show of co-hosts. 
Again, real film nerds with Mystery Mike and uh, and Matt Hinshaw. Also joining us last night on the patio at Rickety Crickets was a friend of mine and uh, and radio legend here from Prescott, Arizona, Mr. Bo Woods. He's been associated with several stations in and around Prescott as well as L.A. He was in Dallas, I believe. And uh, and he has a, a a long history with radio broadcast. He's a he's a DJ from way back. His dad was also a DJ, I believe, out of L.A. for many many years. Bo Woods has a rich history with radio broadcasting. And he was running the oldie station here in Prescott for a number of years. That's where I came in contact with him. Most recently, though, Bo has launched his own podcast. It is a once a, once daily, five days a week, 10-minute podcast with his partner, Ronnie. And it is the Ronnie and Bo Show. And it is just two guys talking for 10 minutes about really anything they want. It's a lot of fun to listen to. Check them out on iTunes. Check them out on Facebook on the Ronnie and Bo podcast. Uh, and the reason I bring this up is Matt Hinshaw, myself, and Bo sat back and talked for a couple hours last night, just talking podcasting and broadcasting and local media and opportunities for us here in local media. Again, me and Matt both have uh, deep histories in print media, Bo obviously with the broadcast media. And we just had a great time just talking and chatting. And it brought up a couple of things, one of which will be Bo and Ronnie will be on a future episode of the Mile High Show as soon as we can coordinate a time. I'm going to go in and watch them record some of their episodes of the Ronnie and Bo Show. And we also might have some future uh, little uh, live audience projects coming up. So stay tuned for that. Follow the Ronnie and Bo show on Facebook. There's a link in the show notes. Download, subscribe, rate, and review the Ronnie and Bo show. And, uh, and just support local podcasting, independent podcasting in general. Uh, there's some good stuff coming out. Uh, interviews here on the Mile High Show, The Real Film Nerds, and Ronnie and Bo as well. Uh, don't forget Blue Milk Podcast, Star Wars This and Star Wars That, Star Wars Everything on the Blue Milk Podcast on YouTube. There's some very, very interesting and fun stuff coming out of Yavapai County in the podcast world. So check them out. Um, what else? Oh, uh our sponsor for this week, of course, as always, the Amazon link at milehighshow.com. Please use that. It's a way to support the show. And by supporting the show, you are supporting the artists like Dale Lee Richards and others who uh, gracefully sit down and talk with me and let me take up their time. So it's a way we can get word out of what these folks are doing, what these artists and entertainers are doing. And uh, and it also, I've said this before, and I'm only half joking, if you use that link, it lets Amazon know you got to them through us, and they give us a little money at the end of the month. So by using that Amazon link at milehighshow.com, it almost ensures that I will not be knocking on your door asking to borrow money or asking you to buy me a sandwich. So... Use that link. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does give us a little financial support every month by using the Amazon link at milehighshow.com. Right next to that is an Audible link. You can click on that link, use the code MILEHIGH at checkout, and you get a free audio download and a free 30-day subscription. And one of those audio downloads can be anything out of that Audible list of over 180,000 titles. Music, uh, novels, books, articles, lectures, Audible exclusive comedy content and podcasting content only available on audible.com. Use the code MILEHIGH at checkout and get a free, absolutely free, audio download just by using that code. BarkBox is also there. Happy pets make happy households. You can get free treats and free toys and, and all kinds of stuff for your furry friends at BarkBox.com. 
by using the link at milehighshow.com. One last thing before we get to talking with Dale Lee Richards from the leaky patio at Billy Jack's is uh, our anti-sponsor of the week. Geico Insurance Company is the anti-sponsor for this and any future shows until they agree to pay to get my van fixed. Uh, Make a long story short, some guy rear-ended me while I was sitting at a stoplight. His insurance company is Geico. They admitted guilt. They admitted they were wrong, yet they still, seven weeks later, have refused to authorize payment to repair my bumper and take care of some very, very minor uh, repairs and uh, compensation for a doctor's visit where I had to get some x-rays. So uh, they have fought me every step of the way spending thousands of dollars, thousands and thousands of dollars to argue over a few hundred bucks. Literally, it's a few hundred bucks that they are refusing to pay. Uh, you might think it's, uh, it's uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of complaint about nothing. Well, I don't have a few hundred bucks laying around that I could afford to waste to fix something that they're insured damaged. So what I did last week is I gave you our adjuster's cell phone and email Mr. Nico Turi, because he was and is, in my opinion, very incompetent at his job. Uh, evidently, it worked. Thank you, anybody who called or emailed Nico Turi, because as of oh, about four days ago, Nico Turi, the guy that's incompetent at his job, is no longer available through Geico Insurance. Uh, what does that mean? I don't know. Did he get fired for his incompetence? Maybe. Did he get put on administrative leave? I don't know. Maybe. All I know is that his cell phone's no longer on and his emails come back rejected. No such user found. So, according to his supervisor, he is no longer available through GEICO and there is no estimated date of his return. So, they've handled our ca- handed our case over to another person and we have to start all over again. Let me say that again. Geico is spending well over $10,000 to fight over a few hundred bucks. And guess where that money comes from? It comes from you, the Geico customer. So every time you cut them a check or pay online or do auto bill pay, a chunk of what you pay for your insurance goes directly for Geico messing with people like myself, making their lives miserable. So remember that, you GEICO customers. You are helping in making my life miserable and uh, making sure that my car does not get repaired to the condition it was before some guy ran into me at a stoplight. So boycott GEICO. Switch insurance companies. Send them a nasty letter. Hit them up on Twitter, at GEICO, and let them know you do not appreciate how they treat the victims of their drivers. But do not boycott Truly Reckless. Do not boycott Billy Jack's Saloon. Do not boycott today's guest, Mr. Dale Lee Richards, a very fun guy who plays very fun music, who is uh, building a robot. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the show. For sitting down, you got a little it's bit a of downpour. Our monsoon. Now you live in PV, you said. Yeah, I live in Prescott Valley. Uh, now, how long have you been in this area? Uh, originally, I lived in Groom Creek, and I moved here in 1971. Oh man! And then uh, I lived 71. Be- how how old? You might be asking I, how old you are. I will be 55 this October. Really? Yes, I will. I was guessing I had a few years on you. And I'm 52, so See? no, I flipped it a little bit. Now I th- I'm the master. I thought I was. <laughs> I just always assume I'm older than most people. Yeah. Well, so, I feel older than everybody, but I'm gonna. I'll be 55 in October. Man, now we we were talking just before I plugged in here, and I was racking my brain on the way over here because through the magic of social media and Facebook, yeah, we're connected. But I couldn't remember. If we had met in person, and you were saying you yep. met me at MVD, the yeah, Motor Vehicle the, Office. DMV. What was the, refresh me, because it's not sticking. Probably when I moved back to Arizona. Yeah. Did I, I, I got a tag or something. You just came up to my window? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you are, you, you got to, just from following you, I really wanted to sit down and talk with you. I love it. Because you've got, 
you are a true local personality. <laughs> I get. I'm, please take that as a compliment. It's a legendary it's a, thing, <laughs> almost. Summarize yourself to people that don't know you. Well, basically, I'm a musical comedian clown, yeah. cartoon. <laughs> you know, I'm in debt. <laughs> And I do music, and I do radio shows, and I do uh, producing my own band, Crowd Bubbles. I yeah. started in uh, Japan with my wife, and basically that's it. I just like to entertain people and have yeah. fun and make mostly make people laugh. Yeah. You are, you are a true original online, that's well, for thank sure. thank you. I want to get into it a little bit more. I know we don't have time. We're sitting at Billy Jack's uh, Tavern, and what are we? Is it? It's do under we? a waterfall today. Yeah. Is this officially Dewey? Is this Mayor? Humble, what, I think. Humble? Is uh, it? I don't know. I don't know. It's on the highway next yeah. to a garage where you can get your oil changed. <laughs> it's next to a dead skunk on the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I want to get in, if we've got time, because I want to hear about your uh, your robot project. Oh, that's yeah, kind Lost of an Space. Ongoing. But let's start. You moved to Arizona in 71, you said? 71. From where? So you, at that point, you were what? Uh, 10, 9, Nine, something like that? Nine, about... Uh, well, I was born in Toledo, Ohio, but I lived in Michigan. And um, how we come to Arizona the first time, my dad had asthma. Yeah. So we moved up to Grim Creek and owned a, a bunch of land when it was cheap. Yeah. And then we missed the water, so we went back to Florida. And then... Florida with asthma. Please. Yeah. And then, <laughs> I don't remember, I've moved back and forth between Florida and here three or four times yeah. and then i lived in japan for a year and i was in a, in uh i, I want to i want to get there cuz i'm assuming that was not uh with the family that was no, on your no. own okay as a kid what what was family like you, you, what you, what dad do for a living he worked in prescott at the dodge dealer i'm trying to think of what the name of it was uh shoot i can't remember the name but it was the main dodge dealer yeah. and he was a mechanic and, would, you know, I had motorcycles and stuff and horses, and we lived up in Groom Creek. And uh, he he might have worked with little Larry's dad. <laughs> I think so, yeah. way back when. Yeah. So that's what, what we did. And yeah. he, was that what he was doing up in, in, in what did you say, Michigan? Ohio and then yeah, Michigan? Yeah, he, he worked for uh, Chevy, I think, yeah. at a dealership as a mechanic. And then moved here, and he worked at the Dodge dealer, Gomer Jones Dodge. Gomer Jones. Gomer Jones. Man, I wish I was still around. It was by Savoy. Sounds way better than York. Yeah, well, (laughs) it was way before them. (laughs) Now, musical family, brothers and sisters? No, pretty much I self-trained, taught, whatever. I got a guitar when I was 13 and didn't take it serious until I was about 15. Yeah. And then... uh, I just started. I start off playing drums in a first, and yeah. then I went to guitar because I couldn't. High school bands and stuff. I was in high school marching band. I, when I got out of high school, I was in the Disneyland marching band. Really, Disney World. Sorry, in Flo- other when co- you yeah, in Florida. Florida. Yeah, Florida. And basically, just always loved music and movies. Yeah, that's the pop culture. And yeah, the, that's yeah. where. It co- what was give me give me a little insight into Prescott back in the uh, in the early seventies and mid seventies. Well, what kind of changes have you seen over the more people? Yeah, just spread out more. Prescott still downtown's the yeah. same, just more people. But uh, when they made Junior Bonner, me and yeah. my dad was an extra in that. Oh, cool! So I got to see that. And what, do you remember what scenes? I don't. I don't like, even know. I've lo- I have the DVDs. I never yeah. can see it. I think it's just crowd, crowd stuff like yeah. at the rodeo ground, rodeo stuff. or whatever. But they, it was over two or three days, and they had to make sure you wore the same clothes. Yeah. each day. So <laughs> wouldn't be hard for me. It's pretty much yeah. what I woke up in. Really? <laughs> Look at it. We're we're being ruined by <laughs> my compadre. <laughs> So you start playing in 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 bands and marching band. I was in. What were you I played in marching band? S- snare drum. Yeah, strapped and, around. Yeah, around yeah, marching yeah. band. And then I was in the marching band at Disney World for two years. And I started my own band. And when I graduated from high school, I took my band and we went to England. 
no, for okay, two months. So you gra- you're in bands in high school. Yeah. Garage bands, you guys playing school dances and local School shows dances. So. What are you playing? What era is this? What 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 years are we talking? So Eighty one. Okay. All until present. What I were you I never quit. Style of music? Yeah. Uh, we were doing the Kinks and the yeah. uh, Beatles, Paul Revere and the Raiders. So you were the cars. doing the retro, well, oh, the cars, but you were doing a, 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 I, and I might be completely wrong. I was talking to a buddy of mine. You probably, I don't know if you know Les Lyman. Yeah. I was talking to him on the way over here, and I mentioned, I said, I, I'm trying to, the same thing I told you. I said, I don't remember if I met Dale before, but this is what I kind of, Picture him being, you know, what, and it's really retro. It's the I am. early 60s, mid 60s, you know, uh, like I said, the kinks, yeah. that English mod stuff with a little surf guitar thrown in, and then yep, the Munsters. Surf guitar, yeah. The Munsters coming up the back. Yeah, <laughs> we recorded the Munsters thing. <laughs> Why, why? What? 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 Why did you gravitate to that kind of style, that era? Because I watched all that. Uh, okay. The monkeys and everything. The monkeys is why I wanted yeah. to play drums. Mickey, Mickey Dolans. Dolans. Yeah, he, and that was before we knew they weren't really playing. Yeah, but that was what got me going. I was about three, and I'd get crazy for the monkeys. Yeah. Sit under the table, kitchen table, and scream. My mom said, <laughs> "But I everything I ever liked as a kid, I never got over it. Yeah. If I collected something or liked it, I still like it now. I still buy toys. I still yeah. like the same movies. I never. If it's good, I never get sick of it. Yeah. Nice. Interesting. So, so per- you were playing that. That music, and, yeah. then, and then the cars even kind of have that feel too. Well, we were doing new wave stuff. Yeah. Hey, Mike. Uh, we were doing new wave. We did the some early '80s new wave. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, flock of seagulls. We did some Duran Duran. We did whatever we wanted. There, yeah. But we were basically people compared us a lot to the Kinks. Yeah, because that's what we sounded like. Nice, nice. And the name of the band was the Minx. The Minx. <laughs> M Y N X. Nice. Now, what we, you you went from. Now, in high, did you graduate from Prescott, or were you in Florida? No, I was in uh, Citrus High School in Florida. So you go from Citrus High School in Florida to England. How did that work out? First off, how did you finance it? Oh, well, my mom and dad, they were going to give us a class ring yeah. or plane ticket. I took the plane, <laughs> I took the plane ticket, and we saved money. And uh, yeah. the drummers, Ann and Uncle, lived in, uh, <clears throat> I think it was Ludlow. England. Okay. So we stayed with them. Gotcha. So, so it was you had a connection there. Yeah. His, but was that for you like kind of like going to Mecca with the Beatles? Yeah, it was yeah. really cool. I yeah. mean, we just lived like everybody lived there for two months and then went and played road trains. I bought I uh, we got sponsored by Vox back then. So oh, I nice. still I still have the Vox guitar they gave cool. me. Only thing I got left, but I had a bunch of amps and yeah. stuff. I only got the guitar left, but were you cutting records at the time? No, or no we just playing a lot, get a lot of, that, get a lot of. We went when we went back in '85. We had a brief success, yeah, but you know, n- nothing major. Playing originals, covers, yeah, that was original. Both? I had yeah. a song I wrote called "Take a Ride," and it was kind of kinks, yeah, power pop. A- available anywhere. I, well, I have get... I have the masters at home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are they on like YouTube or anything? You know? No, I don't think so. I could put up one on. It's yeah. it still would be good. It's yeah. pretty basic, but it, it, people liked it at the time. So you're 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 seeing some success, doing what you love, music, musicians. Same same group of guys that you went over with the first time. Uh, yeah, the bass player switched out. Yeah. He d- decided not to go, so we got another guy. Now, what were you calling yourselves when you went over? To, was the Minx. Still the Minx still? Yeah, okay. that was all through the pretty much the eighties. Nice. And, and how did how did the Far East come into play? <laughs> well, <laughs> I went through a divorce, and I went to Epcot, and yeah. I went to all the lands. If you yeah. know Epcot, yeah, yeah. Never since, been, but I know well, the Well, they're yeah. staffed by people that come over for six months. Yeah. So I figured I can go to like 13 countries and talk to the girls from each country. <laughs> Without ever leaving yeah. Florida. And I always loved Japan and the Japanese yeah. people, staff, they were really nice. So yeah. I went home 
And uh, I just, uh, I'm going to Japan. I'm going to marry, find a Japanese girl. <laughs> so that's why I went. That's the truth. And that was marriage too? Uh, well, yeah, Still eventually. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. yeah. She's in crowd bubbles with me, yeah. Chia. Yeah. So that was uh, 14 years ago. Oh, nice, nice. Now, how long were you were you in Japan? I was there a year. Yeah. And then we moved to Florida, got hit with a hurricane. I decided to come back oh, to Arizona. Yeah. yeah. And then I had the opportunity to go play at a couple of amusement parks in Hong Kong. So I set that up. And I went over there four times, and most times it was disaster. Hmm. It was really that? Like very what? hard. Yeah. And uh, the agent was kind of a mafia. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> oh, he was. Yeah. Philip Fung. If you're listening. <laughs> and I was, I was playing on an island off of Hong Kong. And uh, I noticed people staring at me. Yeah. And the the handlers that was with me, they said, "You gotta, we gotta leave." And I found out afterwards that they wanted to steal my eyes. <laughs> so I went. I went to a <laughs> Catholic church. I know it's funny. You can't make this up. And they shipped me to an island in the Philippines for six weeks. Wait, wait you, you went to the church for what? Like sanctuary? So I went to. <laughs> I couldn't find nobody that could speak English, and I knew the Catholic <laughs> Church. So I went there, and I told them, and they shipped me off to the Philippines. And I stayed there for six weeks and played some stuff. Yeah. And, and then I went, come back, and then I felt like I got beat up, and I'd never give up. So I said, I'm going back to Hong Kong, and I did it three more times, and each time was okay, didn't get rich, come yeah. back one time with a lot of money, but... Yeah. Because I've had a lot of money and no money. Yeah. Right now, it's no money. <laughs> so you end up planted back in, in Prescott. Yep. When, when did you get here for your last stint, I guess? Ten years ago. Ten years? So the last ten years or so? Yeah. Now, who are you getting ready to take the stage, the, stage, the corner, yeah, the, the room the, here the, at Billy Jack's? Who's, it's just Truly Reckless? Truly Reckless. Now, where where else do you guys play? You guys got regular, you got a residence somewhere? Oh, Prescott Resort. Kind of yeah. Uh, <laughs> basically anywhere. The, yeah. We're at the Windsock a lot. Uh, we play the Sidekicks a bunch. Who, who's Tony's. Who do you got? Uh, John Alvera is uh, rhythm guitar. And Rick Cope is the bass player. And Alex Romero. Yeah. Which me and him's been in Is bands for fifteen years. Yeah, drummers, yeah. fifteen years. Me and him's been in bands that were my nice. bands, and then this. And when I come back from Hong Kong, they needed a guitar player. Yeah. So I said, if I can add my little bit of rock style to what we're doing, because yeah. I'm not really a country player, but I had to learn some. Yeah, yeah. But that's how I got hooked up with them, and I've known John for years, too. So. Yeah. All right. Let Let's Let's hit a little bit about your. Uh, your connection to to toys, pop culture. Okay. Obviously, it's it's a it's a it's, at least it's a big part of your online life. It is. What you talk about there. Um. Your your ongoing project. What, the the what Lost is in it? Space Robot. Yeah. I'm in the. It's a club called the B Nine Builders Club, and it's people from the show, people that build professional props, yeah. and people like me. And so I started it like eight years ago. And it's a money pit, but it's <laughs> it's really cool. I, it's all audi audio animatronics. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, really cool and uh, a lot of work. Everything I've handmade, I did buy the torso yeah. from a, a company, and a couple parts are left over from the show. Really, couple, couple knobs. Yeah. Oh, nice. Now, what is it? Full scale? Yeah. It's what is full scale? I'm trying to remember. He's right about now. he's about six foot tall. Yeah. How, how and about four hundred pounds, man. My weight. <laughs> how, so, how long? You, you said about eight years. You've I've been, been building because it costs a lot of money. Yeah, you, you know. But I, I, I got the main parts, and I just recently got the arm bellows. I, I remember seeing those online. And I work on it when I feel like it. Got to be in the mood. Yeah. So you don't mess something up. Yeah. So, I've always loved Lost in Space and had you know lucky that i've got to meet a lot of the people from the show cool. and 
pretty much. Uh, that's now, what, cool. What what separated that from what else was on at the time? You know, uh, uh, you know, Star Trek, obviously. Oh, I, uh, I like you know, Star Trek. What, why why did Lost in Space jump out at you? At, why did that uh, grab you? I was about Will Wa- Will Robinson's age yeah. when Billy the show Mummy. was. Yeah, yeah, Didn't Bill Moomy. Moomy? Yeah. Is it Moomy? Yeah. Isn't he, was he involved in music for a while? He still is. Yeah. He's a friend of mine on Facebook. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, he does music, and uh, I think he's 64 now. Yeah. But he was a little bit older than me, but when I'd watch him and the robot and Dr. Smith, just the interaction. That's who you identify yeah, with? Yeah, I imagined me being Will. Yeah. So I, I always loved the robot. So what's the old, what's the robot's name? Does it have a name or no? He, or? He, He's the model B nine. They B9. just yeah. They just call him uh, environmental uh, self theorizing <laughs> robot or whatever. But he's B nine. What's just, the ultimate goal here when you complete this project? What do you what, what's going to happen? What do you do? I don't know. I told <laughs> I, I I have a basic museum. It's a little bigger than this, and it's just filled with everything. Really, I just collect and manic. Yeah. So. I don't know. Maybe when I'm dead, my wife will bury me in him. Now, what's her what, what what's her take on this? Oh, she loves that she, stuff. She, she, she was in bands in Japan playing the yeah. Go Go's and stuff when oh, I was nice, in bands. Nice. So, uh, you know, she doesn't like some of the money that's spent on yeah, it. Yeah, obviously. So yeah. I got to sneak it. <laughs> but uh, she's she likes a lot of the same stuff. Disney, we're crazy about Disney. Oh, nice, so. nice. Yeah. Well, cool. Now, what what are you? Uh, What's on tap for you guys coming up? Anything? Any? any Just a mix. What you mean? Just give or? gigs? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, there's never know. We have a yeah. booking stuff. I don't know off the top of my head. Website? I, is there? Is there a re- truly on, reckless page? Uh, yeah, there is on Facebook. Truly Facebook? reckless. Okay. I'll put a link. And, in. Yeah, and on my page, yeah. I have my crowd bubble stuff or whatever I'm doing. I just put on there. I try to keep it light or funny. Sometimes. Go to the line, little <laughs> not go over the limit of what's yeah. correct. <laughs> what kind of broadcast history did you have here? You mentioned you're doing some broadcast radio stuff. Oh, that, I, I, the shows that were overseas, just radio yeah. shows. Okay, nothing local here. No, no, no. They were uh, a lot of times call in, but a lot of times yeah. just play in a, a pre-recorded thing, and then they play our song. Yeah, yeah. In Germany or Japan or England or whatever. Nice. I still do that, but yeah. There's oh, one cool. station called the Wax Museum in uh, New York that plays our stuff. Ronnie Dark, he's on the Facebook. Yeah, that's his name on the on Ron, the radio. Ronnie Dark. Ronnie Dark nice. in the Wax Museum. He's cool. Nice, so, nice. As far as bigger gigs, who knows? We just keep going. I show up where they tell me. Now, d- d- real quick, you got You're going up in a few here. What uh, what are some of your you mentioned uh, you know in Japan them wanting to steal your eyes? No, that wasn't Japan. Well, that was China. China, okay. China. It was China. <laughs> <laughs> Where? What, give give me a, 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 anything else that comes to your mind as far as you know hell gigs. What were some of the ones that, uh, that over there? Anywhere, anywhere oh. here, here, there, stateside, Arizona, Ooh. Billy Jacks. I've been, <laughs> I've, yeah, Billy Jacks. It's cool. I hope, hopefully, everything goes smooth. I, I remember one time at this particular place, there was could have been violence because the guitar player we used to have said something about we're going to do a monkey song for these monkeys, and it, they didn't like it. So, but you know, really, I've been doing this since I was fifteen. I never quit. So, as yeah. far as gigs, I really have to think because yeah, I mean, so many of them. Oh, yeah, it's and experiences and. Plus, I'm gone. I go overseas, or I'm here, or went to England, or whatever. Yeah. All that stuff's kind of blurry unless I get triggered into it. Hey, Mike. <laughs> it's because you cut off my circulation, hold my hand. Are. That's such a weird guy. Well, who is that? <laughs> what was your what was some of your first gigs when you went to the UK as a kid, watching uh, the Kinks? You know, modeling, kind of modeling yourself after them, the Beatles and stuff like that. Obviously, the Monkees stateside, but going over there for the first time. We played youth clubs. Yeah. And that was cool. Youth clubs because they would let us practice in there and we could leave our stuff in there. And uh, 
played in Leeds, and it just happened to be the night the Rolling Stones were playing. So the kids that did get to go to that got to come see us. Yeah. So that was cool. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. riding trains. I remember going to the Vox factory to get the guitar. And How'd you hook up with Vox? What was I that? called them and acted like I was a manager, but it was me. <laughs> Ruben Kincaid? Yeah, I was, I was Ruben. <laughs> So I did that, set it up, and got Premier and Vox, Premier drums and Vox amplifiers, and they sponsored us, and I got to keep some of the stuff. How cool, man! How nice. But it, I told them eventually, you know, that was me. That was me because I was only I was eighteen, <laughs> so I didn't think they're going to listen to me. So I'd say, well, I, I got this band, I can send you their stuff. <laughs> so that's the truth. Yeah. Interesting stuff, man. Well, hey, thanks for sitting down. That of was course, fun. I've Matt. been wanting to talk to you, like I said, just following you on Facebook, going, this guy's got uh, he's got an interesting background, I can tell. Well, thank I you. Can tell. I I'm appreciate it. I'm looking forward to seeing your uh, your final, what is it, a B, B9? B9? Just Lost Space Robot, Lost. yeah. <laughs> B, he's B9, Model B9. All right, nice. Hey, do you got any uh, any pictures of your room? Your, your 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 collection. I do, maybe, and my phone or computer. Can can you maybe send me one? Yeah. I can put up on the on the site. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. It's, I got a it's a mess, about, but do you know Matt Hinshaw? Maybe the last used name to be sounds a familiar. Photographer for the Courier for a number of years. He's been on my show a couple of times. He's a buddy of mine. The name sounds he does familiar. A movie review podcast he just launched recently. Uh, Real film nerds. Oh. But I, I always make fun of him because he's a single guy, mid-30s, 36, 37, something like that. And uh, lives by himself. Single guy, lives by himself in a three-room house. He owns a house over there, Diamond Valley. And uh, he has one room dedicated solely to what he likes to call his action figures. It's his Star Wars dolls. Oh, I, I have a lot of dolls. Star Wars dolls. And... Uh, I think he would appreciate uh, that there is another avid collector. In uh, yeah, the area. I, I collect that. I've got hundred-year-old player pianos. Oh wow! M- movies, projectors, cameras. What's mm. something you've always wanted that's been out of your grasp? The you real chitty it. chitty bang bang. The whole car. The real. <laughs> I want. The, that's my favorite movie too. I want that car. I want the car. <laughs> What's your most prized? That you have besides my wife, probably the robot the and robot. the nineteen nineteen yeah. player piano. But you said it right. Besides my wife, that's yeah. good. No, that's she's good. kept is me she, straight. Is she still playing? Yeah, she does the she does the crab bubble stuff. We're working on a new CD. Crab bubbles. That's right. okay. That's so. Um, where can folks fi- folks find out about crab the, bubbles? That you could just Google that, and a that's lot of it? stuff will come up. Nice, nice. And we have web pages and stuff, and have CDs and stuff. But if you Google it, there's. 14 years of stuff will oh, come up. Oh, nice, off. nice. I'll Videos, some whatever. Of that. Maybe use some of that on the intro and the outro. Yeah. That'd be good. Well, Dale, thanks. I appreciate Thank you it. very much, man. You guys, truly reckless, getting ready to take the stage at Billy Jack's Tavern. Maybe, ho- hopefully, everything will go smooth. You won't yeah. lose power and nobody will pull a gun. Thank you. To the seconds to spare. I couldn't find my gem anywhere. I couldn't find that plane to carry me home. Said to me, you gotta make it to the top of my dream. I didn't think that I could make it, but I carried on into the sky. I went on home from the land of the rising sun. I was gone. See you.